In this example, we are demonstrating the overload behavior of switch mode power supplies that have a hiccup mode. In hiccup mode, the output current is monitored. In the event of an overcurrent, the power supply disables the output and attempts to re-enable the output after the overload has ceased. This process is signaled by the flashing LEDs of the WAGO I.O. system node. When the overload is removed, the system, here the WAGO I.O. system, starts up automatically the next time the output is enabled. Switch mode power supplies with a hiccup mode cannot be used to implement applications that require high startup currents. In this example, we are using a power supply unit with a hiccup mode and a nominal current of 1.3 ampere, which supplies two output circuits. The WAGO I.O. system is running in the first circuit, while in the second circuit we generate a short circuit directly at a C1 miniature circuit breaker. The hiccup mode is easily recognizable by the flashing LEDs. As the short circuit current is repeatedly interrupted by the pulsating deactivation of the output, the miniature circuit breaker will never trip. The magnetic trip unit is not triggered as there is no high short circuit current present. Due to the pulsating deactivation, the conductor does not heat up, meaning that the thermal section of the fuse does not respond. If the short circuit was detected and eliminated now, there would be the risk of the machine automatically starting up. Here we want to demonstrate the overload behavior at constant current, respectively power. We are using a 5 ampere power supply unit with constant power behavior and a C2 miniature circuit breaker for the setup. The short circuit is generated directly at the miniature circuit breaker. The power supply increases the output current by lowering the output voltage. This makes it possible to achieve a brief overload of up to 150%. This overload behavior can be used to implement applications with higher startup currents. The disadvantages with a short circuit are, however, similar to those found in hiccup mode. As the short circuit current is also limited in this case, the magnetic section of the fuse in the miniature circuit breaker cannot react. But the output of the power supply unit is not disabled here, meaning that the thermal section of the fuse will open the electrical circuit after an undefined time. A higher current is applied to the output circuit until this happens. This could result in a cable fire if thin conductors are being used. An electronic fuse can be better adapted for this and provides more reliable tripping. In this setup, we have connected a 15 meter cable to the sensor actuator box. A sensor is connected to the box by an additional 3 meter cable. Now we are simulating a short circuit in the sensor. Although the overload LED is lit on the power supply, the miniature circuit breaker fails to trip. In this case, the best possible outcome would be the thermal section of the fuse responding after an undefined period of time. The surest way to trigger a miniature circuit breaker is by using the top boost function. In this example, the 5 ampere power supply provides a current of 21 amperes for 25 milliseconds in the event of a short circuit. This short circuit current is sufficient to trigger the magnetic section of the fuse in the C2 miniature circuit breaker for a brief moment. These options are limited, however, by the cable length. If the application is spread over too great a distance, even the top boost may not be able to provide enough current through the cable to the miniature circuit breaker. This is another situation in which an electronic fuse would be the best choice. In this setup, we have connected a 15 meter cable to the sensor actuator box. A sensor is connected to the box by an additional 3 meter cable. If reliable triggering of a miniature circuit breaker is prevented because the cable is too long, only an electronic fuse can remedy the situation. The fuse trips reliably in only a short time, as electronic fuses require a lower trip current 
than thermomagnetic circuit breakers. The red flashing LED indicates that a channel has been tripped. After a short time, the LED begins flashing in orange. This means that the channel can be reset. Pushing the button switches the channel off. Pushing it again reactivates the channel, allowing the fuse to be reused.